US President Donald Trump wasted no time making big changes to the tech world. One of his first actions after inauguration was signing executive orders about social media and the AI industry. Plus, a supercomputer for your personal desk, as showcased at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas. Do we really need such powerful technology at home? Also on the show, why is it so challenging for schools and universities to detect AI-generated texts? These are the topics moving the tech world. What an iconic picture. Three of the world's richest men, together with a slightly less wealthy tech billionaire at the inauguration of US President Donald Trump. This might be just the start of a closer alliance between big tech and the US government. Donald Trump has already taken the first steps to deregulate the tech sector. But what does this mean for users worldwide, for innovation and for the balance of power? US tech for the world. You might be thinking, deregulation in the US tech sector? Why should I care? Well, Apple, Amazon, Google, Microsoft, Tesla, Meta, but also OpenAI or Uber are shaping our lives pretty much regardless of where we live. Even though they have to follow national and local laws, they often do so reluctantly. And beyond that, their technologies are usually only slightly changed to meet local legal requirements. At their core, it's all tech made in the US. When the rules around how this tech is developed change, it affects all of us. So far, three key areas are impacted. Deregulating crypto. Donald Trump launched his own cryptocurrency just before he took office. It's a so-called meme coin, without real practical value, but with potential as an investment object. Shortly after, his wife Melania did the same. Some have called the move a blatant financial conflict of interest on behalf of the president. In his first days of presidency, he ordered the creation of a cryptocurrency working group to deregulate the crypto market. US deregulation of cryptocurrencies could significantly impact global adoption. According to estimates, only around 7% of the world's population use crypto, for now. Crypto pros. The decentralized nature of cryptocurrencies offers users independence from banks and enables faster transactions. Crypto cons. Critics argue that it facilitates all kinds of crime and corruption. Crypto is the preferred means of payment on the dark net. One of the biggest risks, especially for small investors, crypto is very volatile and you can lose all your money in a heartbeat. Also on Trump's agenda, deregulating social media. One of his first acts as president was to sign an executive order that Trump says is aimed at restoring freedom of speech and ending censorship. This will have big consequences for social media, more hate speech and more disinformation, including on X, Instagram, threads and Facebook. Elon Musk, CEO of X, is likely a big fan of the order. He is a self-proclaimed free speech absolutist and has long since reduced content moderation on X to a minimum. A couple of days before Trump's inauguration, Mark Zuckerberg announced new community guidelines for Meta. Homophobic or racist statements are no longer flagged. Additionally, external fact-checking has been eliminated. Zuckerberg claims that fact-checkers were politically biased, but doing without them could create harm for users, exposing them to potentially dangerous content, such as misinformation about health, or even allowing hate speech against minorities that might turn into violence. And an alliance between politics and social media could also be used to deliberately influence users. Elon Musk, for example, has beaten the drum for Donald Trump on his platform X in the presidential election campaign. He also donated around a quarter billion dollars to Trump's campaign. Now, Musk is set to become part of the government as a director of the newly founded Department of Government Efficiency. Another key focus of Trump's deregulation plans, AI. Trump announced a major AI initiative worth 500 billion US dollars. OpenAI's Sam Altman will be part of the new initiative called Stargate. Trump calls the venture the largest AI infrastructure project in history. On top of that, Trump has revoked a Biden executive order aimed at addressing the risks of AI. The order required AI developers to share safety test results with the US government before releasing systems to the public. Its goal was to prevent companies from prematurely launching AI products, those that could jeopardize national security, the economy, or public health and safety. At the center of the debate, generative AI, which creates text, photos, and videos from prompts. Unfortunately, the technology comes with a bunch of problems. Text AI makes mistakes and even makes up stuff. And image AI can be misused for deepfakes of all kinds. Deregulation. 
who profits? The deregulation plans mentioned got enthusiastic feedback from the tech industry. For users worldwide, they could mean two things. On the upside, we could get new US technology and products faster. On the downside, it most probably won't mean we will get better products. On the contrary, with fewer limitations for developers, we're likely to become guinea pigs for underdeveloped ideas. And especially with new technologies like AI, there are some real dangers. What do you expect for tech under Trump? Let us know. Do you love football? How about having an AI compile game highlights from your favorite teams around the world? Or are you more into gardening and want an AI model that gives you personalized tips for your backyard? Too bad you don't own a supercomputer that makes it possible. Yet, at the Consumer Electronics Show, CES, the US technology company NVIDIA just presented something that could bring us closer to this vision of the future, a personal AI supercomputer. Don't care? Well, this thing could actually change the way you work and live. Meet Project Digits, a desktop supercomputer that lets you create your own AI models. An AI model's problem-solving skills depend on how many parameters they can handle. The more, the better. NVIDIA says Project Digits can handle AI models with up to 200 billion parameters. For context, the original ChatGPT had only 175 billion parameters and needed massive data centers to work. Instead, we've got this now. You can run it solo or connect it to your Windows PC or Mac. So, is this your new computer? Probably not. Not yet. Starting at 3,000 US dollars, which is about 2,900 euros, it's still too costly for a lot of people. So why is developing AI models on your own device a big deal? Here are some reasons this could change the game. Personalized AI tools. You could create your own AI models that execute tasks for you, like scheduling, data analysis, or even content creation. The possibilities are endless. Just look at what the mainstream companies are doing with their resources right now. In 2024, Microsoft's head of AI mentioned they're testing AI that can make purchases for you. And US company Anthropic revealed an AI model that can take over a computer and move the mouse or type, for example. OpenAI's Sam Altman even expects virtual colleagues to join the workforce this year, meaning AI models trained to work with you on projects. So yeah, consulting firm McKinsey predicts that AI could automate up to 30% of work hours by 2030. Data privacy. One advantage, keeping AI local means your data stays private. If your AI books doctor's appointments, would you want tech companies knowing your medical details? Probably not. Storing data on your device, not in a cloud, reduces the risk of breaches. It can also help build trust in tech and comply with data protection laws like those in the EU. Cost and energy savings. Cloud AI is expensive. Paying for infrastructure and subscriptions adds up quickly. Personal AI devices are way more energy efficient than huge data centers, which consume loads of energy. Google is even looking at nuclear reactors to power their AI servers. But NVIDIA's Project Digits? Just plug it into a regular outlet like you would with any other computer. So, do we really need a supercomputer on every desk? Maybe not. ChatGPT and other tools already cover a lot of ground, but AI's influence will keep on growing. And whether you're an early adopter or a skeptic, I think it's worth paying attention. OpenAI CEO Sam Altman in a flashy sports car. This TikTok got a lot of positive feedback from students that use OpenAI's ChatGPT to get ahead. Meanwhile, schools and universities worldwide are sounding the alarm, saying we're in an AI cheating crisis. Is AI a great way to thrive academically or is it making us dumber? And why is it so hard for schools and universities to spot AI-generated text? Let's dive in. AI chatbots, even though they do make mistakes, can be super helpful for students. For example, a study assistance. They can break down complex topics into simpler ideas. They can summarize, give examples, and answer your questions. Bots can also help with writing, brainstorming ideas, creating outlines, and even providing feedback on drafts. Many students worldwide regularly use AI tools. In India, 44% of undergraduates say they have used AI for their university tasks. Even more interesting, 60% of teachers in the country are using AI too, for everything from lesson planning to student management. So if so many people are using it, what's the problem? 
There's a fine line between using AI for help or for cheating and plagiarism. If you let an AI complete an assignment entirely for you, your knowledge level will likely be misrepresented. And since AI uses existing sources, you could end up presenting someone else's ideas as your own without crediting them. Nevertheless, your text would look new and unique to most human eyes. For universities, this is a huge problem. They bear a big responsibility. We trust doctors and lawyers because of the institutions that gave them their diplomas. If people cheat their way through degrees, they could become dangerous to others because of their missing knowledge. So why don't universities use software to catch AI-generated work? Spotting AI-generated text, why it's difficult. Firstly, AI models are becoming more and more sophisticated, often so fast that detection tools can't keep up with them. Then the current AI text detectors are not very accurate. They can flag things incorrectly, either missing AI-generated work or marking human work as AI. Non-native English speakers have a much higher risk of being flagged because their simpler grammar might resemble AI language. What's more, using AI detectors in languages other than English can be difficult. Arabic or Hindi, for example, have unique idiomatic expressions and syntactic rules. Given that many AI models are trained on English or Spanish, text detectors may not effectively understand or process these nuances. And last but not least, as many students might know, detectors are easy to bypass. Simple modifications, paraphrasing, or introducing grammatical errors, for example, can fool detection tools. But you did not hear that from me. Because of all this, many universities are backing off from using AI detectors for now. What are we supposed to do about it? Think about the pros and cons of using AI in your studies. Which services are fair to use? Many universities are already creating AI-positive policies. At Cambridge University in the UK, it's now OK to use AI for getting an overview of new concepts, act as a coach, or help with time management. Some scholars call for exams that should be done in a way that no one can cheat using AI. And to prepare students for the working world, schools should teach generative AI, but only using limited versions. And then it's also up to us. Be honest. In which context have you used AI that you know you probably shouldn't have? Would you share that with us? Bye for now and see you next time.